Good morning! Halika, magkapi tayo! Welcome to the morning coffee with Father Jerry. Our text for today is from the Gospel of Luke chapter 14 verses 25 to 33. It says, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus And turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower, want to first sit down, and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for them of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. Thus far is the reading for today's Gospel Reflection. The Costs of Being a Disciple What is it for us? What is God's message for us? through this gospel text today. We all know that before we proceed to a new project, we need to have a good feasibility study so that we could gather an intelligent analysis and could now calculate how much is the cost of such a major undertaking. The same thing is true in our preparation when we commit ourselves to follow Jesus. We should make a deeper reflection in order for us to calculate the cost of discipleship or the cost of being a disciple, a follower. Of Jesus. The specifications are out. If you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and come follow me. That's the invitation. That's from the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. So, Discipleship is a costly project. We need to know if we can afford it in advance or we are willing to pay the price once we embrace to it. Remember this. Our feasts were closed when we were born into this world. There is a certain centeredness and 
selfishness innate within us. We are not naturally disposed to deny ourselves. But Christ promised us an easy yoke and a burden that is light to those who decide to follow. That's from Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. But let us be aware that Jesus only assures us of the ease and the lightness in his yoke. The assurance does not include immunity from problems underlying it. Nonetheless, it is fair enough. It's according to our ability and capability. Everything is light and easy because of His grace. The gospel can be a difficult one to understand. Jesus once again was on the road with his disciples and the great crowds were following him. At one point, Jesus turned around to the crowds and addressed them. If anyone comes to me who does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his or her own self or her own life, he or she cannot be my disciple. Jesus also adds, whoever does not carry his or her own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. These are extremely strong words coming from the Lord. Did Jesus truly mean that literally that we are to hate our parents, brothers and sisters, and children and friends? Or is he telling us that if we choose to follow him, we need to realize that Jesus needs to be the first in our lives, in our commitments? He is making a very strong point in here that our primary attachment or allegiance always needs to be to Jesus himself. He didn't say that we cannot or should not love and care for our families and our friends. He realizes that we have committed ourselves to our families and we need to live out that commitment. But his challenge is in the order of necessity or in the order of priority he should be our first he didn't say you need to hate your parents wife children because of me no he said our love and commitment to follow jesus should come first Second is our commitments to our family and friends. Our challenge. In the biblical times, the expression to hate often meant to prefer less. Jesus used strong language to make clear that nothing should take precedence over God. God our Heavenly Father created us in His image and likeness. He has put us first in a response to His overflowing love towards us. He willingly embraced the cross, not only out of obedience to His Father's will, but out of His merciful love for us to set us free from sin and from everything that would keep us away from His love. Jesus is telling us that what is essential and most important. First and foremost, Jesus 
must be first in our lives, in our priorities. However, Jesus also wants us to love and to care deeply for our family and friends and our community. Today, we may strive to love a person we meet along the way or we encounter or maybe that person is our co-worker who is struggling or an individual we simply do not like. The quality of love that Jesus hopes for one another surpasses the simple notion of liking the other person. Rather, Jesus hopes that we truly will love every person in the world. No ifs, no buts. This may sound impossible, but by the grace of God, nothing is impossible. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are my treasure, my life, and my all. There is nothing in this life that can outweigh the joy of knowing, loving, and serving you all the days of my life. Take my life and all that I have and make it yours for your glory now and forever. Amen. Okay, so paano ito magkapatid? Thank you ulit. Magandang buhay sa ating lahat. And may God bless us all. See you tomorrow.